Let's look at how to analyze a timing report. In this module, we'll identify some timing analysis strategies and uh, identify essential pieces of uh, timing report and uh, then look at how to analyze some example timing reports. Uh, chips today have multiple standards, functionalities, and power profiles, uh, different test modes, and uh, also multiple constraint sets. So how do you uh, satisfy all the constraints simultaneously and uh, implement a chip while satisfying all these modes? So uh, this is something that uh, obviously uh, you know is required in today's designs and uh, the analysis is done concurrently on uh, all the modes uh, simultaneously. There are three types of uh, analysis modes that are currently allowed in the system. The single analysis mode, and the best case analysis mode, worst case analysis mode, and then the on-chip variation mode. Basically, the on-chip variation is the most commonly used one, and uh, the other two might be less common. We can look at them anyways. Uh, so the choice of analysis mode uh, basically influences where the timing information is coming from, how it's used for delay calculation, and how the delay calculation is performed, uh, where the timing constraints are coming from, and how they are interpreted. The single mode is essentially the max only delay mode. And if you're using the max only library, uh, that's the only library where the delay information is going to come from. And only the constraints related to max or uh, constraints that, it say, are unspecified are the ones that are used. If you are going to use a single delay calculation pass, uh, and the slowest slews are the only ones that are propagated, and this is all for setup. And if you switch to hold analysis, then it still will be done with the max data and constraints. So if we look at the bottom, uh, the sample constraints, only the blue ones are highlighted. So only those are the ones that have any effect on uh, the analysis. And uh, when uh, the delays are actually taken for these buffers in this design, uh, the, only the uh, max library delays are the ones that are used. You're reading the libraries, max libraries for max, and min libraries for min. And uh, from the graphic, as you can see, both the early and late paths uh, for hold analysis are calculated via the best case library. And also, the min delays are the ones from the SDCs, are the ones that are used for an analysis. Now, for the worst case library uh, for setup, the worst case library is being used for both uh, the late path and the capture clock path. And uh, also, the max delays in your constraints are what's used for the analysis. So in the on-chip variation mode, it's natural to assume that uh, one of the buffers is in one part of the uh, chip, whereas another buffer is in on another path or another part of the chip. And therefore, uh, you're actually taking the delay values for each buffer from different libraries. And so uh, this variation uh, in the, uh, the delays of the buffers from different regions of the chip is captured via these libraries because the libraries are characterized accordingly and therefore uh, can be used for those purposes. So when you look at the um, example graphic, the min library uh, is actually uh, using uh, the values of the libraries from the early uh, lib, and the late uh, values are actually coming from, uh, or the max uh, values are coming from the late library. And so therefore, uh, when you do your setup analysis, 
all your launch, uh, I mean capture clock paths are all uh, coming from uh, your or your data path uh, delays are actually coming from your max library or your late library and the capture clock path uh, all the delays are coming from the min library or the early library. Uh, same thing for the hold analysis. Uh, you actually are going to reverse those. For the early paths, uh, everything is coming from the min library. And the late path, uh, which is the capture clock path, the delays are coming from the max library. Typically, any timing report is broken down into the arrival time calculation, uh, the required time calculation, and slack. So uh, basically, you'll see that the arrival time, uh, which includes the start point, any input delays, cell delays, and so on and so forth, uh, and uh, up to the end point. And then the required time calculation typically shows your capture clock and uh, any uncertainties and things like that that are subtracted from the required time. And uh, finally, uh, the slack calculation, which actually just shows whether the timing is violated or met. And uh, also, it shows um, uh, basically if there are any uh, additional uh, information that uh, is pertinent for your design or path. The example report shown here is a report generated from the NOS implementation system. And uh, it starts out with whether that particular path met or violated. So in this example, it has met the timing. So the check is passed. It also shows the end point and the begin point, uh, begin point meaning the start point, and uh, what clock is actually triggering it. Uh, so um, both the cases, uh, they're being triggered with the leading edge of clock W4. Now, uh, the tool actually has some inbuilt grouping of paths, and uh, so therefore it's mentioning that there is a path grouping called uh, clock W4, and then it moves on to the other end arrival time. Now, the other end arrival time is where the capture clock actually captures the data. So that uh, is shown there. Now, any delays up to the point leading to that capture clock is what the other end arrival time is. Uh, so it could be buffers, things like that. Then uh, the required time calculation is also showing uh, the phase shift uh, and uh, setup. So phase shift is one clock period because it's the same clock. And then the setup is actually removed from that. So um, basically, your required time is phase shift minus setup minus uh, plus the other end arrival time. Now, and the arrival time calculation is actually through all the uh, cells in the particular path. So you start out with uh, your uh, clock rise edge and uh, your launch clock information, so any clock network propagation. Uh, so it's telling you that it is propagated clock. So there are buffers in the design, or uh, there is uh, a, a long net delay, and that is what is causing the 0.15, and uh, that is the begin point arrival time, so which is what the launch clock uh, where it starts. So now uh, through the... Um, uh, path itself. Uh, the delays actually start from the launch clock uh, through the data path uh, up to the point of the D pin of the um, uh, clock, that is the um, end point, so the D pin of the flop. So it is showing what timing arcs are actually it's uh, going through, and it's adding the delays uh, for all the cells for the specified timing arcs. So that's basically what it's doing, and then coming up with new arrival time calculation at each stage. And so therefore, uh, the report basically shows all this information and uh, then arrives at the conclusion that the timing has been met. This report here shows a whole check in the Innovis implementation system. Uh, the path one in this case is violated, uh, the whole check, and uh, so therefore 
uh, it is actually reporting where that particular hold check has been violated. And uh, the endpoint is actually checked with the leading edge of clock W1 and uh, the begin point is in one. So this is an input uh, to flop path. And um, the report also shows the other end arrival time uh, value. Uh, so especially when uh, you don't have a full clock information, the other end arrival time is basically just uh, the um, uh, delay through the buffers to the other end, uh, which is the capture clock. And so, uh, in this case, uh, we are uh, using a multi-cycle path, and so therefore, uh, the cycle adjustment is shown as minus 20, and uh, so, uh, basically, uh, the other end arrival time plus your hold, which is the uh, hold uh, check, and uh, uh, the phase shift is zero. Uh, it's the same clock. Uh, and uh, then uh, your cycle adjustment uh, is basically the multi-cycle path, and uh, then your required time is calculated as does, um, adding those up. So your uh, required time is given as 20.648. Now the arrival time is uh, 0.117 through the uh, paths, I mean through the cells in the path, so uh, these are all clock buffers um, that are actually being shown here. And uh, then, uh, so basically your uh, clock rise edge and any adjustments because of the drive and input delay, uh, you are resulting at the begin point arrival time. So where the uh, clock begins, the launch clock, is minus point, uh, 0.014. And basically, your arrival time, if there are any exceptions, they're listed there, and uh, you're adding up two cycles. So if we look at uh, the uh, arrival time, uh, it's actually uh, 0.117, but the required time is 2.0648. And the slack calculation is done as uh, arrival time minus required time. And because it's a negative value, your slack uh, is actually a negative value. And uh, so you're actually uh, violating the whole check in this case because of that. So um, basically, uh, you identify problems like these and try to resolve uh, if the cycle adjustment uh, was correctly set. Maybe there is a multi-cycle path that was set wrong in this case. So all of these kind of situations uh, you need to analyze and make sure that the constraints have been properly applied and uh, that the tool is reporting uh, the path correctly and so on and so forth. In this example, we are showing a prime time uh, timing report. And uh, basically, the arrival time section is shown at the top. The required time uh, section is shown in the middle. And the uh, slack calculation is actually shown at the bottom. And uh, basically, the slack is met. Uh, the required time minus arrival time is the uh, slack. So uh, basically, R stands for rising, uh, F stands for falling, and so on. Uh, in uh, the other reports, uh, we used an uppercase caret and uh, a V uh, to actually indicate uh, rising and falling uh, edges. So if there is a uh, you know, caret symbol, that implies it's a rising. And uh, if there is a V symbol in brackets, it implies it's a, um, a falling signal. In this report, notice uh, what is the start point and the end point. Uh, what are they called in this report? and also um, identify uh, where is the slack, uh, where is the uh, required time calculation. Uh, also look for uh, any clock uncertainties and things like that. And uh, also where is the arrival time calculation shown. So look for that kind of information. And uh, basically uh, also look for the delay through each of the cells and uh, how 
uh, the uh, arcs are represented and things like that. So uh, in the example here, it is a Tempus uh, sign-off timing uh, report. And uh, uh, so it looks slightly different from uh, some of the other reports. And uh, so uh, it is important to identify all the pieces. By changing the constraints, you end up changing the timing reports. In this case, we added a cycle adjustment of 5.5 uh, nanoseconds, so which is one clock cycle. And therefore, by adding uh, this additional um, cycle, your uh, timing, required time, has actually gone up. And so therefore, your slack time is actually um, you know, almost pass. I mean, it's not violating anymore, almost. Uh, but it could have, uh, depending on uh, how the constraints actually have been modified. So uh, basically, it is important that you identify the effect of the constraints and that uh, the constraints are not what's causing your uh, design to meet or violate uh, the uh, timing.